Hey everyone, Wolf Lord Row here. Today we're discussing which traitor Astartes bloodline would be the best for the Imperium to use in a new founding. General spoiler warning to begin as today we will be referencing events from across the world of Warhammer 40k. So you have been warned and with that said let's just jump straight in. So last week we discussed the successor chapters of the Astartes and we ended the week with a discussion on which Primarch bloodline has the best successor chapters. For me, it was hard to ignore the accomplishments of the Ultramarine lineage, undoubtedly the backbone of the Imperium's defence for the past 10,000 years. However, the Imperial Fist successors particularly stood out for me on a personal note. The closeness of the Sons of Dawn and the strong traits of Rogal still being true. The stubborn, sheer refusal to submit. And well, since then, I couldn't help but wonder about the other lines as well. Those that may or may not have been secretly used by Belisarius Core. The ones that have been missing and forbidden since the days of the heresy. The gene seed of the traitor Primarchs. If one could be used for its own founding today, if Gilliman relented to Belisarius' constant appeals and told him he could use just one of his traitor brother's gene seeds first for a new founding, which traitor gene seed should it be? Which legion of old should get successors today? Who does the Imperium need in its current situation? As always, there's no right or wrong answers with this, just your own opinions, so drop your own thoughts in the comments below. And don't forget here we're talking pure gene seed. This would be successor chapters of the traitor legions as they were, back in the days of the Great Crusade. So who have we got? What are the choices? Well, we have the Emperor's Children, the Iron Warriors, the Night Lords, the World Eaters, the Death Guard, the Thousand Sons, the Sons of Horus, or more appropriately the Lunar Wolves, the Word Bearers, and finally the Alpha Legion. The galaxy this successor line of chapters would be introduced to is the bleakest the Imperium has ever been, quite frankly. Imperium Nihilus is cut off from the Emperor's Light, smothered by the forces of the Ruinous Powers, worlds isolated, alone, with countless millions fallen or destroyed by chaos. And though Imperium Sanctus is described as stable, it's an eternal war zone in itself. So whatever line returned, or was introduced, they would need to fit this situation. Yes, they all would in their own ways, but we're going to have to be very picky here to drill it down to just one. And I'm going to begin by ruling out the World Eaters. Now, we need to remember this would be their gene seed at its purest, and these chapters would obviously not have had the influence of the Butcher's Nails, or even Angron himself. However, the World Eater's history pre-Angron, even in its earliest days, is still recorded as being particularly savage, and it was not unknown for them to slaughter everyone upon a battle zone. In fact, it was quite common. This kind of savagery of course has its benefits, and a host of chapters unleashed across the galaxy with it would be a tremendous shock to the forces opposed against them. They would bring plenty of victories in short order, through the sheer ferocity of their arrival. But for me, even though the World Eater's brutal nature does fit the nature of the modern Imperium, the Imperium it has become over the course of the last 10,000 years, with, let's be honest, Exterminatus being used more often than ever. 
I don't think Gilliman would be happy with a host of chapters active in this manner. And with Corn more ascendant than ever, having turned whole swathes of the galaxy into his rage, I just can't help but feel these chapters of all would be the most likely to succumb to that too. Yes, that logic is undoubtedly swayed by their history with Angron and the Nails, which probably isn't fair to them. However, their line simply doesn't have the checks in their nature, such as the Space Wolves, or that symbol of the angel to aspire to with the line of Sanguinius. So I just couldn't have the same confidence in them as I do with, say, the Space Wolves or the Blood Angels. So for me, World Eater successors would be out. The next line I'm going to rule out is the Alpha Legion. Again, though their abilities at infiltration and subterfuge could be a big benefit with snuffing out an uprising before it's begun, with a well-timed assassination here or a kill team inserted there, I'm just not sure Alpha Legion successors would bring as much to the front lines as other lineages could. And I'm very aware I'm falling into exactly the same kind of criticism Rogal laid at Alpharius' door here, as every line was made by the Emperor for a reason. But in a war against the nature of chaos itself, the ruinous powers, subterfuge and infiltration is most likely going to be more regulated to the back lines compared to out and out firepower or frontal assault. Yes, the Raven Guard do very well in this climate, but their infiltrations are generally limited to the battlefield. The Alpha Legion, for me, are far more schemers in nature. So, for me, I think there's better alternatives out there. Now, after this, it gets incredibly tough for me here. We obviously already have been teased with a possible Emperor's Children successor, with the Sons of the Phoenix chapter. And I can see big benefits to having a founding of Emperor's Children successor chapters. They were historically noble of virtue and personality, so they would fit in well with the successors of Gilliman, a very easy incorporation to larger Indomitus fleets for example. The Emperor's children too were historically very good at leading and cooperating with the forces of the Imperial Army, so that would be a huge benefit with the current Astra Militarum. They even excelled as diplomats making them good possibilities to fit in and use if Rebute extends his Tetrarch format from Ultramar, which I think is very likely. Quite simply, the Emperor's children have a lot going for them here. They could well be a good prototype choice, seeing how it goes with them before rolling it out to other bloodlines. Let's be honest here, that could well be what Belisarius Call has secretly done with the Sons of the Phoenix, despite claims their Imperial Fist successors. A few centuries of showing they've been exemplary in combat, with no grey records or disputes on their record, Belisarius could well present them to Gilliman, saying actually the traitor gene seeds work perfectly well. Now, I think we all know that would cost him his life in the process, but hey, that could be his intention. But regardless, the Emperor's children are definitely a strong contender for me. Next up, the Iron Warriors and the Death Guard equally would be perfect for the constant war and danger across this new galaxy, both excelling in their grinding styles of warfare which could be invaluable to the current Imperium in many ways. However, I can't help but wonder if that would be better suited to legions, as they were originally intended, rather than the chapters they have become. Would the constant losses be a bit too much for a chapter to maintain? 
Of course, similar chapters exist to this day, so you can't rule them out. And both successor lineages wouldn't have their Primarch's fairly brutal nature above them, particularly in the Iron Warrior case. But in having to be real nitpicky here, I think I'm going to rule out the Death Guard and Iron Warrior lines. At the end of the day, I just think there are better options out there. Now, part of me can't help but wonder what a founding of Night Lord successors would bring to the current galaxy. And indeed, I think it could be very good. For all the Legion of Old's dark nature, their gene seed was always remarkably pure. Similar to the Alpha Legion in some ways, they could be particularly good at snuffing out rebellions before they even have a chance to begin. Except rather than a well-timed assassination, it would be a very public execution. Of probably the entire ruling caste as well. But so is the way the Night Lords worked. Using and harnessing terror to induce loyalty. Fear of the Emperor's Wrath. That could equally be employed in the current Imperium. And while I may be wrong, the Night Lords just feel a little more inclined for frontline action than the Alpha Legion when the need arises to me. And I think that would be more prevalent in this current galaxy. I mean the Night Lords tied up the Dark Angels Legion at its peak for years upon years. That is no small feat. The question really is, is could the Night Lord successors and their methods fit in with the rest of their fellow chapters? Essentially facing the same problem as their Primarch and Legion did back in the days of the Crusade. Just as Gilliman frowned upon them then, I think he would now too. And I think they would face a lot of the same objections. So, while I love the idea of a loyalist Night Lord successor's founding, I'm not sure I could class them as one of the favourites. One lineage that immediately sprang to my mind on first asking the question we are today was the Sons of Horus, the Lunar Wolves. Always the brightest star back in the days of the Crusade, with the greatest record, Surely they would be a logical choice to have as a successor founding. Introducing a flood of chapters who excel in the killing blow. Decapitating the head of the snake. That is a speciality and tactic that could prove particularly useful with the foes the Imperium now faces. The Orc Menace. The Forces of Chaos. Both tend to unravel fairly quickly after the loss of a warband commander. And so the Lunar Wolves for me have to be a definite strong contender. The only real con against them I can think of is they were united with their Primarch so early, you could say we don't really know how good they were without Horus. Okay, you can use Abaddon and the Black Legion as an argument, but that's a conversation for another day. And really, Abaddon had benefited from decades and centuries by Horus's side. It's inarguable the Lunar Wolves' record within the Great Crusade was thanks to having Horus the entire time. So it makes them a difficult proposition to judge. But now the final two. Two of my favoured candidates... The Thousand Sons and the Word Bearers. In this new Psychic Awakened Age, is there any line more suited to a return than that of Magnus the Reds? The power of the Psyker has proven to be the most effective in combating the tides of the Ruinous Powers. There was a reason the Emperor offered Magnus the chance of redemption and a new legion to reconquer the stars. Not just because the power Magnus possessed, but because what his gene line represented too. The Thousand Sons as a legion always punched above their weight, and a founding of chapters in their mould 
could provide a huge boost to the Imperium's defences, perhaps more than any other. But it wouldn't come without risks, however. A founding of Thousand Sun successors without the guiding hand of Magnus essentially would leave a whole host of psychic powerhouse chapters left to their own devices, with no real psychic checks in place which is a bit of a gamble more than other lines. You've also got the historic problem with their gene seed, the flesh change, mutations that swept and cursed the Thousand Suns Legion. Now the Emperor was unable to cure this or fix the problem in the gene seed directly, and so I find it hard to believe Belisarius Call would be able to do what the Emperor could not. We know the flaws remain for the Blood Angels and Space Wolf Primaris, for example. So honestly, if the Emperor couldn't fix the Thousand Sun Gene Seed, I don't think there's any way Belisarius could. And so, I think that would all but certainly mean any Thousand Sun successors would undoubtedly face the same problem as their one-time Legion with soon all the chapters facing outbreaks of mutation. In this current day Imperium, that would lead to their extinction very quickly. And so, for that alone, despite the huge advantages otherwise, the Thousand Suns for me are out. And last but by no means least, the Word Bearers. Maybe not a legion that leaps to mind for having a renowned combat speciality, but the word bearers would stand apart for their sheer devotion. No, maybe the legion didn't worship the emperor outright as a god before their union with Lorgar. However, they absolutely were already zealous and fanatic, only then to the imperial truth and the ideals of the emperor's vision. Such overwhelming devotion to the Emperor and the Imperium now could really be exactly what the Imperium needs right in this hour of darkness. And let's be honest here, with the ordinary Astartes and Gilliman himself beginning to accept the Emperor could well be a god, with the Ecclesiarchy dominating the Imperium as a whole, and the entire empire worshipping the emperor as a god, I don't think it would be long before the word bearer successors would adopt that belief too. So, as a result, a founding of loyal word bearer successors could flood the Imperium and the Astartes with a big intake of faith worshipping chapters. As we know, faith is the biggest weapon the Imperium currently has. There's a reason the Adeptus Sororitas are one of the most valuable forces in the galaxy right now. Why appearances of saints and the Emperor's power are becoming more and more common wherever they walk. Where wounds are being healed by just their prayers and hymns alone. And the tides of the ruinous powers are being turned back. The same could be said for the Black Templars, who are equally benefiting through their faith. They have by far and away the highest survival rate of the Rubicon Primaris procedure, for example. And so in a galaxy where faith has now been weaponized, where even the Tau are now having to face a newly risen deity, I can't help but feel the more the Imperium can encourage faith in the Emperor the better their chances, the more they can resist and fight back against the ruinous powers. Where the Adeptus Auroritus walk, where the Black Templars walk, worlds find their faith restored and boosted on mere sight of them alone. A whole founding of chapters likewise minded would be an unbelievable asset to the Imperium. And I absolutely do not think this would increase the risk of them falling to heresy either. That was solely down to the influence of Erebus, Lorgar and Corferon for the Legion. A successor line removed from them would be no different from the Black Templars. Having such a zealous, devout founding of Astartes, 
who even if they didn't embrace the Emperor's godhood, would still give a huge boost to the symbol of the Imperium. The light that it represents. The fight against chaos. I can't help but think a founding of Wordbearer's successors is a very strong consideration. And so, the final decision. Who would I ultimately go for? Let's see, my top contenders were the Emperor's Children, the Lunar Wolves and the Word Bearers. With a love for the idea of loyal Night Lords coming out to play. However, I'm not sure I could rank them up with the top three. Honestly, I think all three options could well bring a lot to the table. And the Emperor's Children could fit Gilliman's current thinking the best. On a mere practical note, I could easily understand why the Emperor's Children could well be the best choice. If indeed Call is experimenting with the Sons of the Phoenix, I can understand why it's them. Why he chose Fulgrim's line. However, for me, for my own personal decision, I think I'm going to have to go with the Word Bearers. Simply for that zealous, fanatic devotion. I absolutely think they would embrace the faith of the Emperor, considering how much it dominates the Imperium entire. It would be like having chapters filled with Grimaldus running around the Imperium, which is an absolutely awesome thought. Faith is so important in this war, it's proving to be such an advantage where it is present. Whether Gilliman likes it or not, it needs to be encouraged. And honestly, I think he's coming round to that way of thinking. I wouldn't be surprised to see Gilliman publicly embracing the Emperor's divinity soon, even if he doesn't believe it privately. But as always everyone, what do you think? Out of all the traitor lineages, if there was to be a founding of just one line, which traitor Primarch's bloodline would you choose to bring back to the current Imperium? Like me, do you see the Emperor's Children, the Sons of Horus and the Word Bearers as the top contenders? Or do you feel the psychic potential of Magnus's line is too good to be ignored? regardless of the problems with his gene seed. What of the grinding, annihilating wars of the Iron Warriors and Death Guard? Could their methods of war work with far smaller chapters? Like me, do you love the image of a loyalist Night Lord founding? Or do you think the World Eater or Alpha Legion successors could be surprisingly effective? As always, leave your thoughts in the comments below, I love to read them. Huge thank you to all my subscribers, your support truly means a lot to me, it really does. If you're new, please consider subscribing to help the channel grow. And if you enjoyed this particular vid, then why not drop a like on it too. But with that said, I am off, and I'll see you all again real soon.